No, I had no idea what POTS was. I I did, once I got wheelchair bound, one of uh, my primary care doctor was like, hey, you might have this thing called POTS. And I was kind of like, what's that? And she was kind of explaining, she didn't explain it very well. <laughs> but she was like, I want you to go see this cardiologist in Denver. Cause I grew up in a very small town where we did not have specialists. Like I, when I was living in Colorado, I had to drive eight hours to see any doctors who knew what POTS was. Um, so no, I had not heard of it in like, I said no one in my hometown had heard of it. Pots is some condition or, or conditions that where the body's normal mechanisms for dealing with gravity are messed up. Uh, you know, when, when any one of us stand up, like 20% of our blood volume gets shifted to our lower body. And for any one of us, you know, that happens from time to time. But people who have POTS for whatever reason, more often than not, or, or quite a lot of the time, they'll, they'll not compensate appropriately. So when I first got sick, I was 12. Um, and I, it was mainly stomach symptoms, so my whole life changed within the course of like two hours. Um, I was having a normal day, and all of a sudden I had really bad stomach pain, went to the bathroom, and I just was so sick. I was throwing up and everything, and I ended up getting like rushed to the ER. Um, and so those were like my first symptoms, and then I started having like these stomach attacks where I would just be in pain and on the floor, couldn't walk. Um, and so that was mainly, those were my first like big symptoms. And then in 2017, I got a viral throat infection and that brought on the rest of my POTS symptoms. So I got the throat infection and then all of a sudden I was so dizzy I couldn't walk. I, um, like my stomach symptoms were so much worse. I, I what happened <laughs> back then. Um, yeah, it just was like my heart rate was going super high, my blood pressure dropping. You have as much fluid returning to the heart and you don't have sufficient pressure to, to get it to the brain. And one of, a, a way that you can compensate for that is to just circulate the blood more quickly. So, you know, tachycardia, the tea and pots is that, you know, most if not all patients will have this rapid heart rate. And we tend to think of it as a compensation. So the heart beats faster to make up for the problem, but it's also part of the problem. So we realize that people who have POTS, their heart may be beating too fast. I had a lot of misdiagnosis. So like when I first got sick, I got, you have IBS, you have, um, like ovarian cysts that are bursting, you know, I got anxiety, depression, you know, all the fun things. Um, and then I got diagnosed with gastroparesis in 2014 or 15, I think it was 14. Um, and so like I knew that was part of my problem, but I still, there were a lot of questions of like, why am I still feeling so sick? And so then after my POTS became full blown um, and I got that viral and infection, I was like in the wheelchair. That's when I finally got my initial diagnosis and that was in March of 20, between onset of symptoms and diagnosis, it was four and a half years. Okay. Yeah. There may be that the arteries are squeezing less tightly. So, you know, like if you pinch your garden hose and you make the water you know, spurt out much faster, so the more tightness there is in the arterial system, that's how you help increase pressure and get the blood up to the brain, so there may be problems where the nervous system isn't working in such a way. I actually don't pass out. I have more gastric symptoms, and I get like a lot of dizziness still and stuff, but I don't pass out as much. And uh, once I finally got diagnosed, my doctor was like, yeah, we think you had POTS since you were 12, but it was mainly just presenting in your gastro. Higher elevations too, that's less clear cut than the, and less consistent than the hot, but to patients who go up, you know, 
Flagstaff's press get to go up to higher elevations um, that may flare up or aggravate their, their pots while they're there. One thing about my class is it does not do well in the cold. And I live, I'm from Colorado. Obviously it snows. It's and I'm from a place where very high elevation. So when looking at colleges, I was like, I have to go somewhere warm, but I also wanted to be close enough to home because just in case something happened. And like two years after I moved into college, I got hospitalized and my parents had to like drive all the way back. So that's kind of why I decided, because my symptoms do a lot better here than back home. Like I went back home like a few weeks ago and I was so sick and I'm still yeah. recovering from that. So that's one reason I decided to like come here to college. Um, one thing I have to do is after I eat um, by mouth, I do have to lay down for like an hour after I eat just because my chronic pain is so bad I can't walk for an hour after eating. Um, but one reason I do eat by mouth in the morning is because I take the main round of my pills. So I was on IVs um, for about a year, year and a half before um, I was finally able to do them at home. Um, so I used to actually go to an infusion center every day, which was very inconvenient. Um, so I'm very grateful that um, now my um, doctors allow me to do these at home. So I can spend two hours doing these at home rather than in an infusion center. Um, and then while I'm doing my IVs, I usually um, will either take a nap if I'm like really exhausted from the day or I take this time to do homework because I kind of have to just sit there for two hours. So I tend to just try to get some homework done um, during this time. And then I'm hooked up to uh, for 16 hours to eat. This time to hook up uh, my TPN. So, um, my TPN is basically a bag full of nutrition, um, and I basically, so I eat enough by mouth, um, to survive, but not enough to thrive. So that's why I do the TPN, um, to kind of supplement my nutrition. And I do also have a feeding tube, um, as you guys have seen. But currently my uh, stomach is rejecting feed, so I'm not using my feeding tube to eat. Instead, I'm eating um, through my veins, so I hook up my TPN directly uh, to my central line. And I actually, for this one, I actually do use a pump. Um, and it goes about 14 hours. Um, and so, like, in total for the day, I'm hooked up to tubes for about 16 hours of rest for my POTS and my POTS symptoms. So today's outfit is a good representation of that. So I'm wearing a loose t-shirt um because when i get really bloated or just my feeding tube i don't like tight shirts rubbing on it so i like wearing something loose so that way i have room to grow in the stomach area and it just isn't causing any irritation this shirt is also great for central line access so if i'm going to do an iv later today i can just easily access my tube and then i also wear compression leggings um that really helps especially like today is a class day so i'm going to be sitting up for like an hour and a half and i get really dizzy so compression kind of helps keep the blood up here instead of down there um and then flip-flops too i my feet get really swollen especially when i'm sitting and not moving in class um and so i like wearing open-toed shoes just so my feet kind of have room to get swollen and aren't like trapped in some tight shoes so yeah this is what a pots outfit looks like so it's pills round two um so since i took my pills around like 10 o'clock this morning um it's about 2 30 now so it's about time and i'm starting to feel a little dizzy 
Um, I might need to go lay down a little bit while these kick in. Um, but I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but over the course of the day, I take like 20 plus pills um, just on a good day. Um, on a bad day, if I'm having to take pain medication or like anti-nausea, you know, it can reach like 25 pills a day. Um, A diagnosis has helped me so much mentally because I know what's wrong with me now. Like when I first got sick, it was so frustrating because I was like, all these doctors are telling me like there's nothing wrong with me, it's all in my head, and I'm like, but I'm feeling this. And so like after getting that diagnosis, it was a huge relief. So it's like I know what's wrong with me, and like now I know how to manage it. Um, but I think it's helped me mentally too. I think I'm a lot stronger. I'm a lot more mature than right. a lot of people in college, yeah. you know, because I can't go crazy and, you know, do stuff. I have to be very, so I think it's helped me, you know, and I'm very calculated with what, like, I choose to take on and stuff. You know, so I think it's important to raise awareness of that and also just, you know, so people are more accommodating and aware, you know, right. like, I think it's just important for people because every time I talk to someone, I'm like, yeah, I have pasta, like, what's that? You know? Right. And I want to get to a point in the world where, like, people are like, oh, yeah, I've heard about that, yeah. you know? And I can kind of, because everybody with pasta is different, like, you know, my symptoms aren't going to be, you know, exactly right. the book. But I think just some um, awareness is very